The Lord be with you. Let's uh, first of all take a look at the folder that has the picture on the front and take a look at the announcements, some of the announcements. First thing to look at is the listing of those in the prayer of the church. I have one addition, and that would be Jordan Church. This is Lauren Eckhoff's sister. Uh, she uh, gave birth to a beautiful uh, baby boy, and, but she's having blood pressure issues, and so we want to keep her in our prayers. Are there others we should be praying for than those listed in the prayer of the church? Yeah, and Lou? David Eckhoff, okay, with an eye injury. Any others? Okay. Um, also to uh, encourage you to take this home and make use of it through the week. Uh, keep these people in your prayers through the week as well. With the World's Fair right around the corner, there's a lot of float work to be done. So uh, take note of that. Um, your help would be appreciated by many and various organizations. Uh, Trinity Congregation, PIE, and the school. Uh, also, I want to bring to your attention the uh, third quarter mission team project. Today there will be a door offering after the service for uh, their project, which, which is an internet radio program uh, called Issues Etc. It goes throughout the world uh, with wonderful theological discussion and very helpful, especially to those uh, throughout the world. Uh, who are in need of uh, extended and more in-depth uh, Bible and theological teaching. So if uh, the Lord would lead you to do that, please uh, give to the mission project. Uh, let's see here. I think that's it with respect to announcements. Other than uh, I will, we will not have Bible class after the service today. And I, I was out uh, in the narthex this morning shaking hands with as many as you as as I could before the service started because I won't shake hands with you afterwards. Um, I'll head to Mount Holda. I'm filling in for Pastor Brown in Mount, at Mount Holda, so I need to get out there as quickly as I can. With respect to Bible class, um, those of you who are regularly in Bible class and for all the rest of you, go home and read your Bible for an hour. Um, read, mark, learn, and inwardly digest. And uh, come back next Sunday and we'll discuss it. Um, look forward to that. Any other announcements we need to make today? Okay. Um, our service is printed in the other folder. Uh, Tenth Sunday after Trinity is where we're located in the church here. Let's begin this morning by singing hymn 901, Open Now Thy Gates of Beauty.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord. I said, I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord. Almighty God, our Maker and Redeemer, we poor sinners confess unto you that we are, by nature, sinful and unclean, and that we have sinned against you by thought, word, and deed. Wherefore, we flee for refuge to your infinite mercy, seeking and imploring your grace for the sake of our Lord Jesus Christ. O most merciful God. Have mercy upon us, and for his sake, grant us remission of all our sins, and by your Holy Spirit, increase in us true knowledge of you, and of your will, and true obedience to your word, to the end that by your grace we may come to everlasting life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father has had mercy upon us and has given his only Son to die for us and for his sake forgives us all our sins. To those who believe on his name, he gives the power to become the children of God and has promised them his Holy Spirit. He that believes and is baptized shall be saved. Grant this, Lord, unto us all. Amen. Cast your burden on the Lord, and he will sustain you. My heart is in anguish within me. The terrors of death have fallen upon me. But I call to God, and the Lord will save me. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Cast your burden on the Lord, and he will sustain you. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Glory be to God on high, and on earth peace, good will toward men. <coughs> thee, we bless thee, we worship thee, we glorify thee, we give thanks to thee for thy great glory. O Lord God, Heavenly King, God the Father Almighty, O 
O Lord, the only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, O Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, that takest away the sin of the world, have mercy upon us. Thou that takest away the sin of the world, receive our prayer. Thou that sittest at the right hand of God the Father, have mercy upon us. For Thou only art holy, Thou only art the Lord. Thou only, O Christ, with the Holy Ghost, art most high in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O God, you declare your almighty power above all in showing mercy and pity. Mercifully grant us such a measure of your grace that we may obtain your gracious promises and be made partakers of your heavenly treasures. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Old Testament reading that's appointed for this 10th Sunday after Trinity is taken from the 7th chapter of Jeremiah. The word that came to Jeremiah from the Lord, Stand in the gate of the Lord's house, and proclaim there this word, and say, Hear the word of the Lord, all you men of Judah who enter these gates to worship the Lord. Thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, Amend your ways and your deeds, and I will let you dwell in this place. Do not trust in these deceptive words. This is the temple of the Lord, the temple of the Lord, the temple of the Lord. For if you truly amend your ways and your deeds, if you truly execute justice one with another, if you do not oppress the sojourner, the fatherless or the widow, or shed innocent blood in this place, and if you do not go after other gods to your own harm, then I will let you dwell in this place, in the land that I gave of old to your fathers forever. Behold, you trust in deceptive words to no avail. Will you steal, murder, commit adultery, swear falsely, make offerings to Baal, and go after other gods that you have not known, and then come and stand before me in this house, which is called, my, which is called by my name, and say, We are delivered only to go on doing all these abominations? Has this house which is called by my name become a, become a den of robbers in your eyes? Behold, I myself have seen it, declares the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. <clears throat> From your presence let my vindication come, let your eyes behold the right. The epistle reading is from the ninth and tenth chapters of Romans. What shall we say then, the, that Gentiles who did not pursue righteousness have attained it, that is, a righteousness that is by faith, but that Israel, who pursued a law, that would lead to righteousness did not succeed in reaching the law. Why? Because they did not pursue it by faith, but as if it were based on works. 
They have stumbled over the stumbling stone, as it is written, Behold, I am laying in Zion a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense, and whoever believes in him will not be put to shame. Brothers, my heart's desire and prayer to God for them is that they may be saved. I bear, witness, bear them witness that they have a zeal for God, but not according to knowledge. For being ignorant of the righteousness that comes from God and seeking to establish their own, they did not submit to God's righteousness. For Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone who believes. This is the word of the Lord. Please rise. Alleluia. Alleluia. <laughs> Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 19th chapter. Glory be to thee, O Lord. When Jesus drew near and saw the city, he wept over it, saying, Would that you, even you, had known on this day the things that make for peace. But now they are hidden from your eyes, for the days will come upon you when your enemies will set up a barricade around you and surround you and hem you in on every side and tear you down to the ground, you and your children within you. And they will not leave one stone upon another in you, because you did not know the time of your visitation. And he entered the temple and began to drive out those who sold, saying to them, It is written, My house shall be a house of prayer, but you have made it a den of robbers. And he was teaching daily in the temple. The chief priests and the scribes and the principal men of the people were seeking to destroy him, but they did not find anything they could do, for all the people were hanging on his words. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise be to thee, O Christ. <clears throat> I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the foot. <clears throat> and he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead, and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please be seated. <clears throat>
we, Lord, you forsake, let us by grace partake of endless joy and sadness. In Jesus' name, Jesus said, Would that you, even you, had known on this day the things that make for peace. Do you know what makes for peace? If you do, you will live. If you don't, there will be consequences. In 586 B.C., before Christ came, the Babylonian army came upon Judah in the south and upon Jerusalem, the city of our God, the dwelling place of our God, the place of the temple, the place of worship. The Babylonian army came upon the city and destroyed it, tearing down the glorious temple of our God. Jeremiah and other prophets were sent by God with his word to warn the people. Their message was the message that we hear today. Repent. Turn from your wicked ways. Because you have a God who is merciful, a God who is gracious, a God who is slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. This is your God. Turn from your wicked ways and you will live. And so he speaks to us today. The people 700 year, or, uh, 600 years before the time of Christ, and indeed people from the fall into sin, human beings from the fall into sin, are no different than we are, and we no different than they. In the Old Testament reading today, we heard Jeremiah pleading with the people. Our Lord told Jeremiah to stand in the gate of the Lord's house, of the temple, and proclaim there this word. Hear the word of the Lord, all you men of Judah, those who enter the gates to worship our Lord. Thus says the Lord of hosts, amend your ways and your deeds, and I will let you dwell in this place. Do not trust these deceptive words. This is the temple of the Lord, the temple of the Lord, the temple of the Lord. You see, the problem with the people of Israel was that they loved their sin. And they felt no need. They believed it wasn't necessary to repent. Why? Well, because seemingly there were no consequences. And they always had before them, in their face, in front of their eyes, the glorious temple. And their thinking was, as long as we have the temple... As long as we can come into this place, even if we refuse to repent, even if we continue worshiping false gods, or listen again to the list that Jeremiah has, behold, you trust in deceptive words, the words that are contrary to God's word, those words of the world. You trust in the deceptive words of your your culture, but to no avail. And then he says, "Will will you continue stealing murdering, committing adultery, swearing falsely, making offerings to Baal, to the false gods, even the offerings and the sacrifices of their children. Sound familiar? And then come and stand before me in this house, which is called by my name, and say, We are delivered. The temple of the Lord, the temple of the Lord, the temple of the Lord, as long as it's standing God's not going to bring consequences. And they continue, as Jeremiah says, committing these abominations. And then similar words to what we heard in the Gospel reading. This house, this temple, has become a den of robbers in the eyes of those who continue in evil. So as I mentioned earlier, because they refused to repent, God gave them every opportunity, not just a couple of weeks, not just a couple of months, but years and years. And there were examples before them. In 722 B.C., the Assyrian army came down and took over the north of Israel, 
scattered the northern ten tribes. Why? Because they too were living in their sin without repentance. And that was a word for them, an example for them, for the south, for the southern two tribes to repent, for Jerusalem and the people that dwelt there, the priest, to repent. And they would not. So the Babylonians came and destroyed Jerusalem and the temple, the place, the dwelling place of God, and people were carried off into captivity. Their refrain, their cry, the temple of the Lord, the temple of the Lord, the temple of the Lord was to no avail. It's similar to what we heard last week when Jesus says, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven. You see, their trust was in that building. Their trust was in their their own righteousness, whatever that was, but they refused to repent of their sin and to seek the mercy and the love of God who would save them. They refused to hear the word of the Lord and believe that they needed to repent because of their sin and that God would finally send a Savior who would rescue them from sin and death as he has rescued us. Well, dear brothers and sisters in Christ, I think we all fall into the same trap, and it may go something like this. Trinity Lutheran Church, Trinity Lutheran Church, Trinity Lutheran Church, there it is! It's always been here, right? I can do whatever I want, say whatever I want, refuse to do the good that God has called me to do, and I can walk into this place without consequence and say, just like Israel, we are delivered. And walk out those doors and continue in whatever life I please. This is not the way of Israel, old or new. This is not the way of the children of God. God would have reminded them, and he did remind them, Israel of old, that he was the God of their salvation. He clearly said to them, amend your ways and your deeds, and I will let you dwell in this place. And they would not. And so they were destroyed. But nothing will ever happen to us, right? Nobody's going to tear this church down. Nobody's going to cart us off into captivity. We're safe, right? Well, 600 years after that destruction, Jesus came. Jesus came bringing what the world needed and what we still need today. Jesus visited the world with peace. This was the time of the visitation and the fulfillment of the promise of God, our Father, in sending His Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, to rescue the world from sin and death. Peace came in the presence, in the flesh, in the work of this Jesus, the Son of God, who came miraculously into our flesh, the sinless Son of God, who took our sin from us and died with it, sacrificed in our place the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world, your sins and mine. Jesus came to bring peace to all of those who would hang on his words. The same words. The words from Genesis to Revelation as we know them today. Words that are constantly appealing to us, we who are sinners, to repent. To turn from our wicked ways and return to the Lord our God, gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. And that love focused upon our Savior Jesus, who gives us peace in the forgiveness of our sins. We fall into the same trap of false security, of thinking that there's no consequence for our sin, and that we can just go on sinning because grace will abound. That's the truth. But Jesus would have us know that as he gives us grace, as he gives us forgiveness and peace, it changes us. When we go out the door, we're strengthened in our faith, 
because of the presence of our Lord Jesus, who has spoken peace into our ears already, spoken forgiveness into our ears, who feeds us each week with himself. Here is the presence of our Lord, his body and his blood given and shed for you, for the forgiveness of your sins and the strengthening of your faith so that you might live your lives for yourself in peace, knowing that you are now reconciled with God your Father, that you have life here and have it with great joy because of Jesus, and you have life forever, even though you die. This is the peace that we have and that all the world would have in Jesus. And yet we fall into that false security of thinking, that I can do whatever I want, I can say whatever I want, because he must, he must forgive me. And there's the church, Trinity Lutheran Church. I'll come when I need it. The kid needs to be baptized. Let's go get him baptized. It's a good time to show up in church. Confirmation, that time comes when, when there's a, <coughs> an in-depth time to teach the faith, so let's get that done too. The wedding is coming up, so yeah, let's get the wedding done in church too. That'd be a good thing. And then finally, at the end, when death comes, well, let's have that done in church too. I'll be there when I need it. <coughs> Stop telling me that I need it all the time. And yet that's exactly what our Lord says to us today, that we need peace constantly. And who of us who of us in this place today can say in this past week, in these past days, in these past hours, that there is not some kind of tribulation, sorrow, and suffering, and pain? Even if we look outside of ourselves and we see what's happening around us in our world and we hear the deceptive words that are all around us, words that would draw us away from Jesus and from his peace, We're caught up in where we live. We are creatures of this world. But we are transformed by our Lord Jesus Christ and by his words. Jesus appeals to us to hang on to his words for peace. Now is the time of the visitation of our Lord. Today is the day of salvation for us. Salvation in the forgiveness of our sins. And he would have us receive that for peace. When Jesus approaches Jerusalem, the people have fallen into the same self-righteous trap. The temple has been rebuilt. There is the beautiful temple in Jerusalem. Jesus, this is the occasion when Jesus rides into Jerusalem in the week of his suffering, death, and resurrection. It's Palm Sunday. And St. Luke gives us the account where, where Jesus before he enters the city, takes a look at that glorious and beautiful city with the, with the temple of God. And he weeps. He cries over the city. He cries for the people of the city who will not receive him. These are his people. These are people who have heard God's word over and over, the promise of a Savior to come. And here comes their Savior. And they would not. They would not believe it. They would not receive such a Savior. So he weeps for them. And he also speaks words of truth, as he always does, and words of consequence. Consequence for their refusal of him, consequence for their refusal to repent. Jesus says, Would that you, even you, had known on this day the things that make for peace. But now they are hidden from your eyes. For the days will come upon you when your enemies will set up a barricade around you and surround you and hem you in on every side and tear you down to the ground, you and your children with you, and they will not leave one stone upon another in you because you did not know the time of your visitation. The Savior came and you would not receive him. You would not repent and receive his peace. In forgiveness. And so Jesus promises them destruction. And sure enough, destruction comes. History tells us that in 70 AD, the Roman army surrounds Jerusalem. 
They lay siege to Jerusalem. They enter into the city and they tear it down stone by stone, including the temple. The historian Josephus, a Jewish historian, records that over a million people were massacred in that destruction and close to 100,000 people carried off into captivity, into slavery. Jesus weeps when there are those who refuse his love, his peace, his forgiveness. And so we must be ready always to do that, to receive him. Today is the day of his visitation. He's already spoken his words into your ears. And you have said your amen to his grace, to his forgiveness, and consequently to his peace. You will come forward and you will open your mouths to receive him as he visits us with his body and his blood. And in that there is peace and forgiveness. There is life now and forever. Jesus, when he speaks these words, he immediately enters into the house of God, into his house. He enters into the temple and he drives out those who would refuse him, those who would turn his house into a den of robbers, even as Jeremiah spoke those words. And he taught in the temple. And that's what we need. We need to hear God's word. The, as it says, the chief priests and the scribes and the principal men of the city were seeking to destroy Jesus. They didn't want any part of his words. But then those last words that Jesus speaks, for all the people were hanging on his words. That's where we need to be. Even more so today, as we are surrounded by those who hate Jesus, those who refuse his word, those who would take and twist his words. We also heard from him a couple of weeks ago, Jesus said that there will be those who are false teachers, false prophets who come into your midst and they are dressed like sheep in sheep's clothing, but they are ravening wolves. They would take his word and twist it and turn it to make it say what they want it to say. And we are to be on guard against that and always return simply to the word that he gives to us and speak our amen to those words of salvation to hang on those words. And hanging on those words mean that we might literally hang on those words. Jesus bids us to take up the cross and follow him. And the cross implies suffering. And as we speak the truth to a world that hates Jesus and hates his words, we might very well hang for it, as did the apostles and many Christians during the early days of the church. But we will do so in grace, in forgiveness, and with the peace that our Lord gives to us. We will do so strengthened in our faith in Jesus Christ, knowing that we are simply journeying through this wilderness of sin and death so that we can enter into that eternity, that eternal life that our Lord Jesus has won for us, freely given to us, and prepared for us so that we might live in the eternal peace that is Jesus, our Savior. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, hear it again. Today is the day of his visitation. Today he comes to us to give us peace and forgiveness. He speaks it to us in our ears and he feeds it to us in our mouths. And we are desperate for it all the time. He calls sinners constantly to repentance to continue to return to him for forgiveness and to go forth proclaiming such a great God and Savior so that all might hear of him and believe and so be saved and to bring them back into the presence of our Lord Jesus so that they too might be restored and that they would have peace. Amen. And now may the peace of God which surpasses all human understanding keep your hearts and your minds through faith. In Jesus Christ, your Savior. Amen. Having heard the word of God and receiving his peace, we rise and sing, Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. and 
Knowing that this house is to be a house of prayer, let us bring now before God our Father our petitions this day. Gracious Heavenly Father, we give you thanks for the many blessings you have graciously poured out upon us. Give us wisdom to use these gifts rightly. Protect us from all greed and selfishness that would turn any of your gifts into idols and grant us faithfulness even in the midst of great abundance. Lord, in your mercy. Give us wisdom, merciful Lord, that we would be ever attentive to your holy and saving word and to the right use of your holy supper, and that we would not fall away, but rather with joy gather around your gifts that make for true, eternal peace. Lord, in your mercy. Defend your holy church throughout the world. Keep our brothers and sisters in Christ who are under the threat of persecution steadfast in the confession of Christ Jesus as their Lord and Savior. Protect your holy church from the love of money and worldly power, that our focus would always be on the proclamation of your life-giving word so that many would be brought by the Spirit to faith in Jesus. Lord, in your mercy. Support and strengthen those who are sick or suffering in any way. We are mindful today of Richard, Nelsie Pearl, Denise, Katie Beth, Paul, Francis, Donna May, Myra, Raymond, Cecil, Les, Vernon, Lucille, Harry, Dick, Roland, Robert, Don, Zoe, LD, David, Debbie, Pastors Mueller and Joseph, Jordan, David, and any others whom we might know. In the midst of affliction, focus us always upon Christ and, ever, and the everlasting hope that he gives. And if it is your will, O Lord, restore those for whom we pray to physical health and strength. Be with those whom you have placed in vocations of care and service. Bless them as they use their talents to serve their neighbors in love. Lord, in your mercy. Grant your care to the relief agencies of our Synod and also to all groups who give loving care to those in need. Give those who work dedication and perseverance that the least of your brethren would be cared for and give wisdom and discernment to those who administer these agencies that their use of resources would be wise and beneficial. Lord, in your mercy. We give you thanks, Heavenly Father, for the great gift of your Son, Christ Jesus, and his holy supper that he has given to us. As we join in with the angels and all the host of heaven, including our sister Eldine, in lauding and worshiping you, lift up our hearts that we would rightly receive now Jesus' body and blood for the forgiveness of our sin and the strengthening of our faith. Lord, in your mercy. As you have invited and as your Son has taught, we have brought our prayers unto you, Heavenly Father. Receive them not on the basis of our merit, but in the name of Christ Jesus, our great High Priest, who with you and the Holy Spirit is one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated.
God the Father, the fountain and source of all goodness, who in loving kindness sent your only begotten Son into the flesh, we thank you that for his sake you have given us pardon and peace in this sacrament. And we ask you not to forsake your children, but always to rule our hearts and minds by your Holy Spirit, that we may be enabled constantly to serve you. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Bless we the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. Amen. Amen.